Christmas Thank word. Thank you, Let Pastor. You. Well, I got to thinking, why does Pastor want me to say a few words about Christmas? And then it dawned on me, I'm the oldest person here. So mm -hmm. I've lived to see more Christmases than anybody else. So I should have learned something, shouldn't I? So I just want to mention four things that I have learned about Christmas. Uh, over these years. I wasn't there at the first Christmas, but over the, uh, when the Lord was born about 2,000 years ago, he was born into a world that was full of darkness and death. Sounds like 2020, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Sounds just like our year that we've gone through. But praise the Lord, he is the light of the world, and he is the life. So we don't have to live like uh, there's no hope because he is the light and he is the life. I don't have to uh, think, Lord, I have no reason to live. He is the life. And so that's the first thing I wanted to think about. And then the second thing, Christmas is, is about giving gifts, isn't it? I mean, you look up here and you see all these gifts. It's about giving gifts. And I thought... Uh, to each one of us here, God has given his very best, Amen. Jesus. Amen. I mean, he's, he gave Jesus for each one of us. It's just what we'll do with Jesus. But God, don't ever forget, God gave his very best at Christmas. And uh, then something that God has been dealing with me about in my later years, uh, we children of God, we that know Jesus, this is what God wants to remind us. And Jesus taught this when he was here on earth. It says, the Father loves to give gifts to his children. Amen. Now, have you ever thought about that? The Father wants to give you good gifts. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, you earthly fathers, you're evil, but you know how to give good gifts. And if one of your children would ask for a stone or bread, would you give them a stone? Or if they would ask for fish, would you give them um, a snake? Or if they asked for an egg, would you give them, a, give them a scorpion? No, no, you wouldn't do that. And it's really amazing to me, if you study those scriptures, everything that Jesus was telling them to ask for increased in value. Everybody knew about bread. Most people knew about fish, but you know back then they didn't know about eggs. Eggs were very rare. So God is saying, just don't ask for ordinary things. You have an extravagant father. Ask for something that's extravagant that he can bless you with. <laughs> and um, this is what the rest of that. So I'm going to read that script, scripture that the Lord um, told his disciples. He says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. Now, we know when we get saved, we get the Holy Spirit. We understand that. So yes. what does this scripture mean? It means there is a fullness of the Spirit that God wants us to ask for. Amen. This is important, Christian, a fullness of the Spirit. This is going to make all the difference in your life, whether it's another 2020 or not, to ask for the fullness of the Spirit. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. You have all of him. But have you ever said to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I want you to have all of me? That's a very important statement to make to God. I want you to have all of me. I want you to have my mind, my emotions, my body to do your will. It will make a glorious year for you this year, this coming year. Well, the fourth thing that I learned about Christmas is that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. Just think yes. about mm -hmm. Mary and Joseph. They were ordinary people. You and I are ordinary people, but wonder what God wants to do through us. Mm -hmm. What supernatural work. Ask for the fullness of the Spirit, that the Spirit can have all of you. I'm going to close with this illustration. I heard a pastor talk about... Um, that he got an opportunity to go pass out New Testaments at an elementary school. So he took his Bibles and he went to pass them out. And when he got there, um, they were standing out in the yard of the school and uh, he was passing out as the students came. Well, one older boy, when he took 
the Bible, the New Testament. He mocked it, and he laughed, and he threw it up into the air. Well, it landed on the roofing of the school. Now, they didn't realize there was a man up there on the roof that was repairing the roof. And all that man saw was there was a kind man down there passing out Bibles. So he thought the man had thrown this book up to him. He picked it up, took it home, read it, and came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Amen. An ordinary man, and God made a supernatural work out of it. The Lord bless you. Amen.